Ah, one pro Yu-Gi-Oh player quits and everybody starts dropping logs in their pants. Where have you been for the past about two and a half months? Although I get it because as a content creator myself, it's a big drought right now. You gotta make content somehow. Let's dive into this again, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host who is dealing with the biggest drought of the most, Avril R32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo Quentin Yu Gi Oh Brown stain off that like and subscribe button. I think that that boo boo stain perfectly encompasses the game right now. We're getting very close to 1500 subscribers. I really do appreciate all this support. At 1500 subscribers, I'll turn into a gorilla since everybody calls me Harambe anyway. And if you've seen my YouTube shorts where I've been drinking alcohol and sitting on my pool deck, yeah. Yeah, we're a, we're a gorilla, so, you know, that's what happens when you're Czechoslovakian and Apache Indian. Anyways, <laughs> um, let's talk about um, how Je Jess, Jessica, I, th I think it's Jess, is quitting Yu-Gi-Oh. I just watched her video. Um, a lot of the points I agreed with her on because everybody and their mother's been saying it for the past month and a half to two months at this point. Um, and then there were also some points that I didn't agree with. Um, and I wanted to go through it um, because obviously everybody's making videos talking about, oh, quitting Yu-Gi-Oh! and the game is dying, blah, blah, blah. We've been dealing with this uh, for like two months now, talking about how price support's garbage and all of this stuff. It's coming back up to the forefront now, obviously, because of the fact that a big name YouTuber slash Yugi tuber because I actually didn't know that Jess was a Yugi tuber until just five minutes ago. Um, it's becoming another forefront issue because a big name in the community like Jess has all but quit the game. She's still going to be involved with the game from what she said, but um, they're just not going to be competitive. Uh, or she's not going to be competitive, excuse me. Um, look, it's the same song and dance, but with different colored pom poms. And it shouldn't really be a surprise because at the end of the day, everyone's still beating that same drum of we need better prize support. We need to not get a seven-year-old console in the form of a Switch. We need all these other things. All the time, I hear people talking about how uh, side events, at whether it's nationals, YCSs, what have you, yeah, even regionals to some extent, have better prize support than the main event. You know, Getting an uncut sheet of Starlight Rares, Quarter Centuries, whatever, can go for a lot of money. And I was actually thinking about this last night as I was going to bed, and I'm like, you know, what could Konami do to help appease the player base in terms of prize support, even if they don't want to do cash prizing, like what Kazuki Takahashi uh, requested, which I think not doing cash prize support, and I think I'm very much in the minority of this, is a great thing because of how toxic the Yu-Gi-Oh! community can be, and I have personally experienced, has been. Uh, and Jess talked about that a little bit, and uh, I'm going to expand on it here. Um, I don't want cash prizing because can you imagine how toxic this community is and you have $10,000 on the line? Yeah, I don't want to deal with that. That would actually make me quit the game, quite honestly. There's two things that make me quit the game that we'll talk about in a minute. But the biggest thing that Konami can do when it comes to prize support, it's one word, variety. Why not give people the choice of what they want? Uh, you have some sort of contract with Nintendo, I guess, because you keep crapping out Switches like it's nobody's business. Why not give people that top events variety? Why not say, hey, do you want a Switch or do you want this uncut sheet of Starlights? Or hey, why not get both? Why not if you get top 64 at a YCS Nationals, whatever, all of top 64 gets prizing. You know, even if, you know, 50th through 64th get two boxes. At least they get something. Just getting top eight at Worlds, losing in top eight, and then walking away empty-handed, you know, she should be getting a couple prize cards or something. Like, to be at the upper echelon and not get anything but basically a middle finger is really garbage. I mean, look at what One Piece and Lorcana are doing for their prizing. Even Pokemon. Now, granted, Pokemon stepped into the world of money-making and things like that and, you know, cash prizing. Same with Magic. Um, but the biggest point with that, and I wanted to bring that up, the Yu-Gi-Oh community can be very toxic. And Jess talked about how the community can be negative. I think she was talking more in the sense of being negative about the game, not necessarily how players can be toxic. And I've talked about this story on the channel before, but years ago, I want to say it was maybe 2011, 2012, maybe even 2013. I don't think it was that long. Um, maybe like 2011. Regardless, there was a kid at this Locals that I used to go to many moons ago, 
and uh, he, he was a cool kid. And um, I think that maybe he got bullied because he had a little bit of a lisp, but he was becoming a better player. You know, he was playing light sworn with like some teching cards and, you know, he was slowly but surely becoming a better player. I mean, you could see his improvement. Really cool kid. And one day he lost to what was one of the better players at this store. And this better player who we're going to call uh, Mr. Douchebag. Mr. Douchebag beats this kid and allegedly, I heard this from my friend secondhand, but he has no reason to lie to me, um, called this up and coming kid a homophobic slur and that he sucks at Yu-Gi-Oh. The kid went home crying, apparently told his parents what happened, and he never came back. For whatever reason, I still saw Mr. Douchebag at that same local, so I don't know if he just got banned for a time or like it was a he said, she said, it never happened type of thing. Um, but I never saw that kid again. And to this day, that story has stuck with me. Like, I just heard it yesterday. Um, because it goes to show how toxic the community can be. You know, and this was back in a time where saying certain words that mean homophobic slurs was not as frowned upon. Um, which, it came out years later that Mr. Douchebag was actually, you know, leaned towards that way himself. Which is not a big deal. But then to call someone that... That can really deter someone from playing the game on any level, whether it's casually, competitively, just playing on, you know, simulators like EDO Pro, whatever, Dueling Book. That that stuck with me for a reason, because it goes to show, you know, how assholeish people can be. And you want to throw money in the fucking mix? No. It would make me quit the game. There's two things that would make me quit this game. Cash prizing and Max C coming back. Because I dealt with Max C for years. I'm tired of Max C. Mulchami Perulia is a diet soda version of Max C. I can deal with that. Just don't play Sprite and you get hit with a Perulia because you're going to crap your pants all over the venue floor. And so people like me who have played the game competitively for 16 years now, I've seen a lot of different things. I saw when the game was ran by Upper Deck and they were allegedly printing fake cards. Um, I would argue that the prize support was better. And at the time, back then, and I think that this is something that Konami should even do now, I would argue, is that if you already had your invite, the invite's passed down. So you get these players who want to keep going to regionals to grind for their world's points, or they just want to be a dick and, you know, get the get the nationals invite for themselves and take it from someone else who doesn't yet have theirs. If you pass it down, more people can experience nationals. Now, I'm sure some people will say, well, you can go to the LCQ and whatever, is someone really going to take the risk, take the Pepsi challenge to go from, say, where I live in Florida to, let's just say, Nationals is held in California, go all the way to California, spend hundreds, if not over $1,000 on travel to enter in LCQs and still bite the bullet and not get your invite to Nationals at that last minute chance? That feels really bad. You know, why not for entering, you get more than a rubber play mat. Woo! I mean, they've been doing rubber play mats and shit like that for years. And I think at the end of the day, it comes down to that Konami has just been set in their ways. I mean, if you go back and look at the history of the game, hell, I have a whole retrospective series on a bunch of different formats of the game. Things have changed. A lot of things for the better. You know, Teledad format in today's money, if you wanted to play uh, Teleport Dark Arm, aka Teledad, at its most powerful state with a crush card virus, which was a prize card at the time, which was over $1,000. With inflation for today, we're talking a $7,000 deck. Like, that's fucking bananas. Like, that that's insane. That's a down payment on a on a sports car. Like, what your boy drives. <laughs> like, no, we don't, we don't need those things again. But having these cool prize cards, like crush card virus, or even like gold sarcophagus was a prize card at the time, which was a really broken card back in the day. Obviously, it doesn't sound broken now. Should we keep getting broken prize cards like that, whether it's a Minerva, Crush card, Gold Stark level card? No, but I think having a fucking vanilla monster that's just literally useless, I think is just really a wrong way to go about it. You know, it shouldn't be something busted like a Crush card or busted like a match winner card, but you should still be giving players something to grind for, whether it's an uncut sheet of starlights. You know, when I was at YCS Indy, over half the players at Indy after round two were on the opposite side of the venue because they were all entering inside events to try and get that uncut starlight sheet because that's where the money was. You know, you're losing money traveling to these events. You're losing money, you know, even on your entry packs. Oh, you pulled a, a quarter century. 
cool. Mm -hmm. Like you're gonna go make maybe a hundred bucks from the vendors when the card's worth like two fifty or whatever the case may be. That hundred bucks doesn't help pay for your deck. It doesn't do all these things. And again, I think it's because Konami is set in their ways. I don't think Konami's really ever going to change um, because they've, they've been this way for years. And this upcoming ban list that we're getting this month, I would argue more than any other ban list in the 16 years I've been playing competitively, is going to make or break the game. If we get this list and Snake Eyes is not just completely gutted, you know, even if it drops to the point where it's like a one point, a tier 1.5 or tier 1 deck, tier 2, whatever the case may be, people are so tired of this Snake Eyes format that they will be pissed and they will quit this game. And Snake Eyes is in a bit of a different perspective uh, than many other decks have been in the past. I would argue it's lasted longer than like Tier Element, Tier Zero. I don't think Tier Element lasted basically two formats because you look at the previous format when we had Link, Karibo, Borload, and Baron and all that, uh, Snake Eyes was the best deck, right? Then it became more manageable once all that got banned for this current format. But yet when you look at the whole thing, you know, the whole timeline uh, laid out, you've got basically half of all of last format and all of this format where Snake Eyes has been the best deck. We're running on seven to eight, almost nine months of Snake Eyes being a viable tier one, now a tier zero deck. You know, that's like kind of back in the day when we didn't get banlist until like every six or nine months, whatever it was. Um, like back in the day, what was it? Dra Let's take Dragon Moves because that's really where the banlist split happened, where we got our first list that was different compared to the OCG. And we were going like every six to nine months getting a list. Um, like I remember for the longest time, if you look back at like early lists, it was like every September and every March we got a list. Then it was like every six months. God, could you imagine like dealing with Snake Eyes for six months you get a list and then you deal with it for like another six months like a full year that's kind of like what we're in right now and a lot of players aren't used to that because we're used to every few months getting a balance that has checked a lot of these things and this deck has lasted longer than many others and it's the same type of frustration that people had with you know uh, decks back in the day like Teledad, Dragon Ruler, what have you, where we would get ban lists like every six months, every seven months, whatever the case was, or every September and every March, like clockwork, and having to go through these long stretch of months where one deck reigns supreme, and if you didn't play that deck, you were getting your cheeks clapped. And it's not healthy for the game. It causes a lot of burnout. I'm burnt out because I, I don't have any content to make. I haven't posted in three days. I did a market watch, and now this is like, what, the third or fourth day since that upload that now I'm finally making a video? And at the end of the day, this balance is going to be the most important. Out of the 16 years I've been playing competitively, this is the worst format I have ever played in, and I'm, I'm so sick of it. And I've had success in this format. I got 10th place with Tempai. I didn't even play Bada Prosperity. I played the Kashtira engine. And we got 10th place with Centurion. What was that? Like a format or two prior. Um, like, I've had more success in these newer formats than I ever did in the past. I've also gotten a lot better as a player. But <sighs> the older formats also had a lot more innovation, I would argue. And you also didn't have the power creep that you do now. You didn't have all the people complaining about prize support. There were some people that complained about prize support back in the day, and that's never going to change. If you want better prize support, it's not going to be in this game. It sucks, but I just don't think it's ever going to happen. Um, but the people complaining about the prize support and all that was very much a minority back in the day compared to now where the game has exploded and you have a lot more content creators and whatever. You know, you go back and look at my videos from like 2010, 2011. I didn't know what I was doing, and I'm sure that they're totally cringe now. But you didn't have a lot of the content creators. You didn't have a lot of the... Uh, people, I guess, for lack of a better term, on YouTube. You didn't have Cali Effect, Pack, Joshua Schmidt, whatever. Um, it was basically M. Cole 40, Asian Persuasion. Uh, I can't even think of any other names off the top of my head. Your Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. You had Jarrell Winston. You had Vexicus 466 and Underworld 6667. That was it. And Sharks Fan 20 ripping everybody off on YouTube, which if you know that name, you are a true OG if you remember Sharks Fan 20. Anyways, guys, I know this has been a bit of a longer video, but I just wanted to get this stuff off my chest because it's the reason why I haven't really been active, why I haven't been uploading, because there's nothing to talk about. You know, it's it's boring. It is what it is. I don't really think Konami's ever going to change. Hopefully, this balance will fix a lot of that. Like I said, this balance is going to make or break the game. If you don't kill Snake Eyes here, 
I think the game's really going to fall off a cliff. And then Konami's really going to have to change a lot of stuff. And uh, I think that this may be what ruins Yu-Gi-Oh! If things don't change. Guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And I will see you in the next video.